I, I'm actually very optimistic right. as where we are because America is a center right nation. We're not a nation that embraces socialism. It's maddening to me. I can only imagine how you know conservatives feel in the Republican Party watching uh, all of these Republicans basically sign on to the Democrat social ag- uh, socialist agenda. Hell, Romney's proposing full blown communism right now with a with a. Uh, 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 Universal basic income. It's absolutely incredible. Democrats want to expand the child tax credit to $3,600. But they don't just want to do that. They want to give it to you monthly. Sounds kind of like the universal basic income. So let's get into it. This is a article from Yahoo.com. House Democrats unveiled legislation to provide millions of American families with up to $3,600 in t- direct payments per child. The tax credit included in President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus proposal would be increased for one year. But lawmakers want to make the increased amount permanent. And also, they want to send monthly payments directly to households rather than paying in a lump sum at tax time. Quote, Nobody pays their bills just once a year. You pay your bills every month, Rosa DeLauro, uh, one of the lawmakers who introduced the legislation, said at a press conference Monday, quote, we make it permanent. We index the value to inflation, making sure that children and families can count on the credit in the future. Romney's proposing full-blown communism right now with a with a uh, 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 universal basic income. It's absolutely incredible. That's amazing. Um, And these people have no idea what communism is. (laughs) I mean, come on, man. Romney's proposing communism with a universal basic income bill. I I need everybody to understand something. Universal basic income is actually... You can support it and have a variety of ideologies. You know, there are right-wing versions of UBI. There are left-wing versions, too but they're definitely right-wing versions of UBI. You know, so for example, Milton Friedman was for a version of UBI. Have a program (laughs) under which we assure a minimum level of of income, of spending, and then let people spend it the way they want. Absolutely. What do you do about people who are poor? Whether for their own fault or not for their own fault. You and I and society in general is not willing to see them starve to death. Correct. In my book, Capitalism and Freedom, I propose something called a negative income tax. Of getting rid of all of the welfare programs we now have, but replace it by essentially a minimum income. You can, you can support UBI as a right-wing libertarian. You can support UBI as a believer in social democracy or a libertarian socialist. You could support it from a, in a variety of different ways and different versions of it. So anyway, my point is... These guys, they don't know anything. Like, they're talking on Newsmax and being confident in their tone, but they don't know anything. They know absolutely nothing, as if UBI is full communism. Like, what? You want to back that up at all? No, of course he can't. He can't. Because they just, they don't like Mitt Romney because Romney is anti-Trump. They don't like Mitt Romney because Romney is anti-Trump, so they're ripping Mitt Romney saying he's a full-blown communist or some shit. And by the way, hilarious, laugh along with me, Donald Trump was for the $2,000 payments. Donald Trump was for them. So is is Donald Trump a full-blown communist? Mitt Romney is a full-blown communist. Can you imagine uttering that sentence or believing it? Just the other day, I made a video about stimulus checks and them wanting to make them permanent. They're going to ease into it. Soon, pretty soon, we're going to have a universal basic income. At least that's what I think. And, you know, we're going to see maybe $2,000 checks every month. Who knows? And that was just a few days ago. But now they're actually trying to ease it in, as you can see, with the child tax credit. So a lot of people are going to use this. And they're and once they have it, they're never going to be able to let go of it. Maybe a job comes up that looks better than welfare. But they're afraid to take it. Because if they lose it after a few months, it may be six months or nine months before they can get back onto welfare. And as a result, this becomes a self-perpetuating cycle rather than simply a temporary state of affairs. It's kind of sad that you can't provide for your children on your own. That represents a problem in the entire economic system as a whole. Perhaps we need to talk about, but monthly stimulus checks, universal basic income, 
bad idea for all sorts of reasons. I don't know what the grand plan is for this. I can only speculate. The only thing I can think of is this is inching us even closer to the plans for the Great Reset. A world of the future where no one has to work. Um, a world where everything's automated, as everything should be. Every, In my opinion, every laborious job should be automated away. The problem is, is when it displaces people from work, what do you do? Well, the lazy way of thinking is, oh, let's have a universal ba basic income and take care of everyone. With a universal basic income comes more rules, more restrictions, and the government will have insights onto your, into your life like they never have before. So you have to think about the consequences. Are you a free individual? If you are giving getting government money, there are always strings attached. Always. We have become increasingly dependent on government. We have surrendered power to government. Nobody has taken it from us. It's our doing. The results? Monumental government spending. Much of it wasted. Little of it going to the people whom we would like to see helped. Burdensome taxes. High inflation. A welfare system under which neither those who receive help nor those who pay for it are satisfied. Trying to do good with other people's money simply has not worked. What I don't like about that right-wing approach is that usually what they're talking about is replacing a certain amount in value with a lower number. So in other words, you might get the equivalent of $1,500 a month from a variety of programs from using the social safety net. And then they would want to get rid of that 1500 in support you have and replace it with like 1000 or 800 So that's a net cut in your benefits, which is, yeah, that's not good. That's a right-wing idea. They want you to get less help, not more. And so that's why I would oppose a right-wing version of UBI, where you limit or eliminate the social safety net and just do a block payment. But if you want to talk about doing a UBI on top of the current existing social safety net or... Simplifying the social safety net and doing a UBI, as long as the amount of money and support that people are getting is equal to or more than what they get now, then I'm in favor of it. We should get rid of a large part of the welfare bureaucracy and of the demeaning rules. We should help people who are poor fundamentally by giving them money. It's not an ideal system. It's not the system we might have liked to get into. But it's a system which would have the effect of eliminating the separation of the society into those who receive and those who pay, a separation that tends to destroy the whole social fabric. It would mean that we, that we could each of us take advantage of opportunities that opened up without fearing that if by some chance we lost our jobs, it would be a long time before we could get back on assistance. It would be a system that would give all of us an incentive gradually to improve our lives, would perhaps enable us over time to work ourselves out of the kind of mess we've gotten ourselves into. A mess we've gotten ourselves into for the very best of motives, but with the very worst of results. Universal basic income hopped my list of one of the most important policies. It, before, I used to not support it, then I supported it but didn't really prioritize it. Now I support it and prioritize it. It's one of my top policies because the best way to get help to people, especially in a pandemic and a depression, is to cut a check directly to them. If it's true that positive action by government uh, is a mistake, wouldn't it follow that your proposal for a negative income tax might actually create a larger uh, class of uh, indolent and unemployed? The proposal for a negative income tax is a proposal to help poor people by giving them money, which is what they need, rather than as now, by requiring them to come before a governmental official, detail all their assets and their liabilities, and be told that you may spend X dollars on rent, Y dollars on food, etc., and then be given a handout. The idea of the negative income tax is to treat people who are poor in the same way as we treat people who are rich. Both groups would have to file income tax returns, and both groups would be treated in parallel way. Let's say I were a family of four, head of a family of four, to take a simple case. Which in fact you do. Well, I am, but as it happens, my children are growing up and they're not very good as, no, more, no good to me anymore as income tax deductions. <laughs> A 
as it happens, my children are growing up and they're not very good as no no good to me anymore as income tax deductions. Uh, that's one of the troubles with you kids growing up. Your parents lose you as a deduction. And, and you, you don't tithe their earnings? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I don't tithe their earnings, and I'm afraid in the modern day the parents continue to contribute to the children instead of the other way around. <laughs> If I were still a family, head of a family of four, I would be entitled to an exemption of $3,000 without paying a tax. That is, if I had an income of $3,000, I would have an exemption of $3,000, I would pay no tax. If I had an income of $4,000, I would have a positive taxable income of $1,000, I would be required to pay a tax on that $1,000. Suppose I have an income of $2,000. Then, by the same arithmetic, I have a negative taxable income of $1,000. Minus $1,000 is my taxable income. If I had zero income, if I had no income at all, then I would have a negative taxable income of minus $3,000. I would be entitled to receive half of that, or $1,500. And in this way, this program would say nobody in the country, no family of four in the country, shall have a smaller amount than $1,500 available for it for its purposes of consumption. That would be the negative income tax. Now, the point that I think it's urgent to stress to avoid <coughs> misunderstanding <clears throat> is that while there's a guaranteed income, a minimum guarantee of $1,500, that income is not equal to the break-even point, the point at which you pay no taxes of 3000 This difference is essential because there are other proposals which have been made under the name of guaranteed income which would say Let's set a level like 3000 <clears throat> Then if a family has less than that, we'll make up the difference. Now, the trouble with such gap-filling programs, with a program which says, if you have less than $3,000, we will make up the difference, is that you destroy the incentive of people to earn anything. If a family on relief, if, let's say, a woman, as currently is mostly the case under aid to dependent children, if a woman who is on relief takes a job and earns $100, and she's honest, she is required to have her relief payment reduced by $100. That's one of the ways in which we've produ been producing poor people. Yes, but it would be easy enough to modify that system uh, without uh, invoking your revolutionary substitute. Not at it? all. Impossible. How? Well, well, you say because it's politically difficult. No, 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 no. Never mind the political difficulty. That's How would you modify it? Well, uh, presumably by per permitting her to keep one half of that yes, hundred dollars. That Simplifying the social safety net and doing a UBI, as long as the amount of money and support that people are getting is equal to or more than what they get now, then I'm in favor of it. And look at what happens. Let's suppose you go that route. Now I have two people, both of whom are working at the same job, both of whom have the same wage, but one of them, before he had that job or she had that job, was on relief and the other was not. The person on relief ends up with a higher income than the person who was not. They would be far better off if we just gave them the money and let them spend it. No, but it, it seems to me that some are very intelligent uh, critics of your proposal, who are as, as wedded as, as you to the same ideals of, of freedom and so on, do, do make the point that um, uh, in a full employment society, uh, when you have people who resist employment because they are under-motivated, precisely what they then need is to be treated not as members of an equal category, uh, but as individuals with individual problems, and that uh, uh, precisely what therefore is needed is the administration of welfare. Well, but let's take that argument. I, I think there's a great deal to the fact that many people do need this, but it's obvious that under present arrangements they don't get it. Under any system you're going to have hardship cases, you're going to have the special problems, you're going to have the people you talk about. One of the great virtues of the negative income tax, in my opinion, is that by taking off the mass burden of income maintenance, it would make it possible for private charitable organizations to do a useful function of just the kind of thing you're talking about. I don't believe governmental civil servants can perform that function well. well I believe the great yes. virtue of private charity has always been that it was able to be individualized, sure. that it was able to go to the particular person. Uh, the welfare, the governmental welfare programs have destroyed private charity. Look at what's been happening. In a period of unprecedented prosperity and affluence, the number of people on the welfare ro rolls is skyrocketing. Why? Because once they get on, we make it almost impossible for them to get off. 
in order for somebody who gets on to get off, he or she has to be able to have a really good job because to earn a little bit, get off gradually, now doesn't pay. Under a negative income tax, you would have people give people, give the poor people, a possibility of getting off gradually. They can earn an extra $100 or an extra $200 and be better off. Thank you.